It is Sunday afternoon on this August 19th, and the main focus in the tropics is quickly becoming Invest 94L, as the Hurricane Center is now giving the system a 70% chance of becoming a tropical depression or storm within the next 48 hours. More on that in just a moment, but we should also mention that we have newly declared 95L Invest located in the western Gulf of Mexico. 94L continues to show signs of organization, and the low-level circulation appears to be much better defined compared to this time yesterday afternoon, despite the temporary waning of convection here within the past three to six hours. But we do expect that conditions should remain favorable enough for this to develop into a tropical depression within the next 24 to 36 hours. If we had to place a time on it, we would say probably tomorrow afternoon, but it could be any time here within the next day or so. Upper level wind shear continues to look favorable. We've got very light upper level winds, and that's why the outflow pattern looks reasonably solid, except across the northern semicircle where we do have some dry air intrusion, and that was underestimated a bit in yesterday's video. But overall conditions still appear favorable with the upper level shear being light and the sea surface temperatures being very warm, so steady intensification over the next four to five days seems rather likely. The latest wind shear streamline analysis from the University of Wisconsin correctly confirms that we do have upper level ridging located directly above 94L invest. And you may be wondering about this powerful upper level low and associated wind shear just to the northeast of Puerto Rico. If this feature were to stay in the same exact place for the next three or five days, then 94L would have some significant problems. But the upper level low is progged to continue moving either toward the west or northwest. So the vertical wind shear should remain light as this upper level ridge moves westward in tandem with the tropical system. Even if tropical depression or tropical storm classification occurs within the next 24 hours, it looks as though the system is already trapped underneath the extensive subtropical ridging out across the central and western Atlantic. And this subtropical ridge is located in all of the low to mid-level steering layers. So regardless of any intensification in the short term, even the mid-level steering should promote a more westerly track toward the Northeast Caribbean. The 18Z tropical model suite is in relatively good agreement with an almost due westerly track over the next four to five days. And the latest run from the 12Z GFS ensembles are also showing fairly good agreement with the track into the Northeast Caribbean. And beyond day five, that's when things start to become a little bit more questionable, where you have a series of tracks ranging from the Western Atlantic to the extreme southeast Gulf of Mexico. The four to five day intensity forecast is a bit more uncertain because it's also dependent on the forecast track once in the Eastern Caribbean and that is when land interaction could become more of a possibility. Therefore you've got models ranging from upper end category three status which at the moment is highly unlikely considering that some of those more aggressive models are also too aggressive within the next 24 to 36 hours but the overall consensus is for a steady intensification for the next five days. The latest 12Z run of the Canadian CMC model is being discounted as it has too much interaction with the intertropical convergence zone and some of this convective feedback is allowing for the storm to get pulled toward the north within the next one to two days by a lot of troughing and that is simply not going to happen so the CMC was not factored into the forecast this afternoon. On the flip side, the 12Z run of the GFS operational run appears to have a much more realistic initialization with a low level vorticity max, and therefore we do have more faith in this GFS run, and it is showing steady intensification while staying just to the south of the Greater Antilles through days 5 and 7. Although the GFS is forecasting strengthening in the short term, it is not quick enough to feel the influences of any minor weaknesses in the subtropical ridge immediately to the north of Puerto Rico, Therefore, that is the reason why it's showing a more westerly track throughout the forecast period. Continuing on now with the 300 millibar relative vorticity, and as mentioned before, we've got this upper level disturbance currently situated to the north of San Juan, Puerto Rico, and this would usher in a lot of southwest vertical wind shear if it were to remain nearly stationary, but the GFS is forecasting all of this activity to begin to lift toward the north, and as we go into days five through seven, we do see a return of the tud troughing out across the eastern Caribbean, but that would have little to no influence on anything that would move into the West Caribbean or Bahamas by then, and in fact it would only help to enhance any upper level ridging that is located out toward the west. You can see what I'm talking about a little bit better with the latest three-day forecast for vertical wind shear from the GFS. 
You see the upper level ridging replacing any of the troughing that was once over the Lesser Antilles, just as the tropical cyclone is passing through the Windward Islands. So this is a favorable setup. And as we go on into day five, we see another tropical upper tropospheric trough trying to dive into the Southeast Caribbean. However, by this time, the tropical cyclone and core of upper level ridging will already be located somewhere near Hispaniola. The 12Z run of the ECMWF is likely overdoing the interaction between 94L Invest and the Intertropical Convergence Zone, and that is likely the reason why over the next 24 to 48 hours, we only see modest intensification into nothing more than perhaps a tropical depression. Finally, as we go into 72 hours, the system is approaching the Lesser Antilles, but hardly a tropical cyclone, and a weaker tropical wave or tropical depression would make a more westward track even more likely, and that is exactly what the European model was showing through days 6 and 7. By next Sunday, the system is forecast to be located somewhere near Jamaica, Although, like we said, the European is likely underdoing short-term intensification, so therefore the system overall for the next five days is likely to be stronger than what the ECMWF is projecting. But something else that we're looking at in addition to just the intensity and the track of the storm in the models is the synoptic forecasted pattern, and we see that the subtropical ridge is still only extending as far west as the Bahamas and southern Florida. So it makes you wonder that if anything is going to be near Cuba or Hispaniola within the next five to six days, it may want to have the tendency to pull a little bit toward the north thereafter, but anything beyond three to five days is highly in question. And finally, the GFS operational, ECMWF operational, and several members of the GFS ensembles are not the only ones projecting a more westward Caribbean track because they also have support from the ECMWF ensemble mean and you can see as we go into 48 and 72 hours, perhaps the European ensembles are a little bit more aggressive with developing 94L before reaching the Lesser Antilles. So we are fairly confident that this will be a tropical storm as it passes through the island chain. And more intensification will be possible as it moves into the Eastern Caribbean, but that is highly dependent on how close it's going to get to Hispaniola. And as we move into day 6 and day 7, the European ensembles are likely a little bit too slow with the westward movement. But nonetheless, they are in agreement with the operational run that it will be located somewhere near Jamaica as we go into next Sunday. So with all of this in mind, we are forecasting the formation of Tropical Storm Isaac no later than Tuesday morning, followed up by an approach toward the Windward Islands as we approach Wednesday morning and midday Wednesday. So interests need to be bracing for a potential Tropical Storm landfall at around that time, and you want to be making those preparations now. As of right now, we do not think that it's going to become a hurricane before reaching the islands due to that dry air, but you still want to prepare for an upper end tropical storm or category one just to be on the safe side. And as of right now, we are favoring the more westerly solution as we go into next Thursday and Friday, which should place the storm just to the south of Hispaniola. And we're also being on the conservative side in terms of the intensity until we see more agreement between the models and also we need to determine if it's going to indeed pass directly over Hispaniola. That's going to be a major wrench in the forecast, especially beyond day five. So this is going to be something that will have to be evaluated daily over the next 48 to 72 hours. And finally, this is one quick look into the Western Gulf of Mexico where we are now watching 95L Invest and this is the partial remnants of Tropical Storm Helene. We said that we would have to continue to watch the Western Gulf, and now the Hurricane Center is saying that there is a 20% chance of development over the next two days. And you can see the remnants of a mid-level circulation that developed within the convection that formed over the course of this afternoon. And you can see that there's a wide abundance of convection out across the Northern Gulf in association with the stalled frontal boundary. As of right now, it looks as though the upper-level winds are going to be just a little bit too strong, and there's going to be a little bit too much in the way of land interaction with Mexico for anything to intensify but we will keep up with this area just in case. Regardless of any development, high rain chances are going to remain likely for the next couple of days here along the U.S. Central Gulf Coast, even extending into the Florida Peninsula as some of this energy gets drawn into the trough in frontal boundary and pushes off toward the northeast. So that's all we have from us here at 28storms.com on this Sunday afternoon. Just remember that all of the forecasts presented here are unofficial, and you still want to look forward to the latest Hurricane Center guidance for life and death decision-making information. And we will have more updates on this developing tropical system out toward the east of the Caribbean throughout this upcoming week.